I'm David Levin, and welcome to another earnest episode of Pop Goes the Culture, the behind-the-scenes tales of TV that have never been revealed until now. Today, part six of my eight-part conversation with Anson Williams, Life After Potsy, Anson Williams' post-Happy Days career, moving on to directing, talking about his love of storytelling. Plus, Anson tells us what was the atmosphere like on the set of Happy Days. How do you like directing? I love directing. Um, I love storytelling. See, everyone thinks of this idea of directing as, oh, you know, angles and lenses, and, and that's all important. It's important to know your craft. It's important to know all the mechanics. But you're basically a storyteller. And these days and age, this day, these days, these, these days and age, what am I saying? This day and age. This day and age. Anyway, it's basically storytelling. This day and age, too many young directors are way into, like, craft and not into substance. You know, you're telling a story. You know, this is the this is the paintbrush. To like, to, Picasso doesn't go there and go, oh, with his brushes. Oh, look. And, no, you're looking at the painting. Same thing. You're looking at the movie. What's the story? That's what I love. I love good storytelling. And and you don't get that all the time as a director, especially if you're for hire. You're doing segments. Sometimes they're good. Sometimes they're not. But there's no greater high for me in this industry than telling a great story like um, the um, Lone Star Kid the story I told you about uh, the youngest man in the history of the United States that's a great story that helps people that entertains people that goes beyond the obvious that's the best show business can do when you can get a movie I just saw Ron Howard's new film um, um, Cinderella Man beyond good beyond good Beyond good. It's like so great. I can't even tell you. You look at the stuff that Ron Howard does today, when you're watching it, do you, do you feel like it's informed by the stuff that you guys were doing, you know, 20, 30 years ago? In terms of, you know, like, oh, well, we learned, you know, I know that, I know that. Um, Ron Howard was, I believe, was greatly influenced, at least in the comedic part of things, by Jerry Paris. Our direct, it was, he had a huge influence on that part of it. Um, so yeah, I'm sure, I, I, there's many, many, I think, parts of, of that experience of, of Happy Days that, that, that are intertwined now in his great directing career. But Cinderella Man, I mean, there's a film that's like, that moves you. That's, it's important. It's an important movie. It, it does good things for people. It, yeah, yeah. I think I've seen every one of the movies that he has made. Yeah, th um, this is one of the best. Is are there any specific, uh, you know, I know it was kind of a, a reasonably uh, sort of upbeat set, I guess you mm -hmm. call it, of Happy Days. You know, certain shows are very well rehearsed and extremely scripted. Other shows are a little bit looser. Some shows invite improv. Other shows, what was it like in terms of Happy Days? How much was... Um, Happy Days, um, we wouldn't call it loose. We call it a work in progress. Um, we were always allowed to have input. Um, <coughs> the final, but what would happen is if you had an idea, you'd put it in rehearsal, the writers would come down, Gary would come down, they'd see it, and they would approve it or not approve it or make it better or whatever. It was always, they let us collaborate. And, but there was a great respect for everyone's job. The final word was always the writer-producer. But we were allowed to have as much input as we wanted. What do you, what do you, um, when you look at it, I know you were responsible for the music, something that you did on Happy Days that was all you, other than music. Something where you said, ah, I did that. You know, like Henry Winkler had his input into Fonzie. What, what was something that was purely you? Um, Mr. and Mrs. C, I created that. That's they thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, it said, I, I said, why, why are we saying Cunningham all the time? Why don't we just say Mr. and Mrs. C? So that was mine. <laughs> that works. There wasn't much else. I don't know. What, I mean, I'm trying. There's nothing that. I mean, I wasn't that. I wasn't that clever. Um, <laughs> I, mean, I you know. I, 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 I convinced them to put a band together and like sing on the show. That's like good. It's all yours. That's good. That's me. I mean, I, I mean, I'm, it's not all me, but I, I came up with the idea. That's a good one. Mr. and Mrs. C, come on. That's like, that's like, that's right there, man. I'll give it to you. I can't think of anything else. <laughs> Next time, Anson Williams continues and talks about spin-offs of Happy Days, Laverne and Shirley, Joni Loves Chachi, 
Mork and Mindy, and of course that means Robin Williams. The perspective from an eyewitness to the birth of a superstar. You don't want to miss it. Till then, do you have a favorite Happy Days spinoff? Let us know in the comments. We'll see you next time.